Welcome back YouTubers to Expendable 123's Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program. In this episode, I will be launching an unmanned moon lander. Now, I'll be using MechJeb for this because it is an unmanned mission. Like I said before, uh, all my unmanned missions will be using MechJeb to pretty much get going. So, let's get this started. Now, uh, I do have the Cathane Detector on this uh, unit. Uh, I will be off screening the scanning of the moon. I will be launching a, uh, hit a small bonus video. I'll show you my satellite design. It uses an ion engine and some batteries that's from the, uh, the mouse, the mouse industries in the my pack that I showed you in the first video. It's, a uh, kind of broken, in my opinion. I mean, uh, it uses batteries, but you can return to solar panels, which the farther you are away from the sun, the, the, it doesn't charge as fast, but even then, it's kind of broken, so I don't like using it unless I'm screening something, so uh, I'll be launching a satellite to go to the that will uh, do its own thing and uh, scan the uh, scan the moon for the cathane, and that will be for the manned mission, which the manned mission will be um, some sort of rover, some sort of lander that will go to the moon, land, and do something with the cathane. Not quite sure, but we'll see what happens. Now, um, I am using a lot of Nova Punch's um, mod packs uh, items. Um, the fuel tanks are pretty good. They're only slightly more efficient than the um, stock parts, so it's not super broken. I like the uh, advanced SAS that this got here. Uh, it's a uh, nice looking, you know, streamlined, not as fat as some of the other ones. But this is a stock engine. Um, just because I have mod packs doesn't mean I'm not going to use stock stuff because some of the stock parts are actually still pretty good. We are. So that should cut and then our time warp. Now the only problem with this module that I've got going right now is that there's no RCS. Um, at least there's no RCS on the, um, the lander, but there's no RCS on this thing. So all it's got is this thrust vectoring and the gyroscope and the pod, which since it's the MechJeb satellite um, um, pod, it doesn't really have that great of a, a gyroscope. So pretty much once it warps, it's going to have to use a little bit of throttle to um, aim itself where it needs to go, which we should be coming up on that. So it's going to de-warp and then... No, it looks like it's still on target. So um, we've still got almost a full tank of this, which is great. Now uh, you can see some of the uh, orbits I've put in there during the testing of this and you know, all that good junk and... You can see the uh, manned orbit debris from the uh, launcher there, so that's kind of cool. But here we'll be breaking into the orbit, and uh, our next target is the moon. Now, the, the way that's easy to target the moon is, uh, is essentially you get to where you want to be, and you see where the apoapsis is? You let your ship swing around until this apoapsis is basically aimed straight at where the moon would be. So we're going to go ahead and uh, time warp a little bit. And our goal is to kind of get this around. See where that unmanned moonliner debris is, how it cuts through there? That's sort of where we want to be aiming. So this is very seat of the pants type thing. Essentially, once I get around to where I think I should be, I'm going to slow it down right about here. There we go. Let's slow it down. Let's actually get the apple apps. Let's, let's get it to a minute before. So we have plenty of time to maneuver. Okay. So we're going to zoom in here, and we want to aim at the moon. So we click target. So it's going to be aiming at the target. Give it a little bit of throttle so that the... Uh, thrust vectoring can get where it wants to go. That way. I want the landing thing to go away. Okay. Now, once it's aimed at where I want it to go, then we'll be burning until some cool stuff happens. So, let's get that aimed. Alright, we're good. We've got plenty of fuel. 
Oh, it's burned. You'll see this stretching, which is kind of cool. Let's go ahead and click save. Keep doing that under acceleration, so save. And now what we're trying to do is get this to intersect with the orbit of the moon. And when that happens, you will see a uh, event happening. So let's slow it down. Slow it down a bit more. Get that to meet. Boom. So we are intersecting with the orbit of the moon. Cool. Alright, let's see, we've got 902 liters. This burns at about 30 liters a second, so that's 30 seconds of burn. More than enough. So we're going to go ahead and time warp. And we're just going to kind of zoom past the Earth. And there's all the debris. And oh, 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 oh. Okay, slow down. So we want. Why are we targeting that? We want to target the ship. So we're still aimed at the moon, which is good. So we're going to get a bit closer to the apoapsis. Let's uh, go ahead and go to orbital operations. We're going to need that. We're going to go ahead and warp to 10 minutes before the apoapsis. Now that'll get us here, and then once we're here, we're going to execute a, uh, a retro burn. There we go. Oh, we just passed the... Okay. That's fine. We can go ahead and zoom in. And we are technically on the moon's orbit. Zoom in, go to one speed, give it a little bit of throttle so it moves out the moon. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to aim at the moon, and uh, if we're aiming directly at it, it's going to pass and we're going to have a kind of a weird periapsis and might have too much. So let's aim at and a little bit to the right. Aiming at it. Let's turn our thing around and give it a little bit of gas. And we want our moon periapsis to be about 100 so we can go ahead and modify the periapsis. So let's go ahead and let it do a burn. And it's going to have to cut 360 delta. Kind of wasting a little bit of fuel doing this, but... Alright, boom. We now have a good orbit. So we're at 960... So we're going to go ahead and teleport, we're going to warp to a minute before our periapsis. Go ahead and let that go. Now what we want to do is let it circularize at 175. So it's going to go ahead and rotate and burn off the last little bit of fuel. A good 10 seconds of burn left, that's not bad. Boom. Nice. Okay, how much fuel do we got left? 61 liters, 2 seconds of burn. Do we want to execute anything? Nah, we're good where we're at. Alright, here is where I would be doing the whole, we're going to go ahead and switch the orbit, and now I would do a north 
to south orbit, I would have to hit a normal plus burn a bit, and it would switch the orbit around. Then I would turn the uh, the device on. So let's go ahead and separate. So we're gonna go ahead and separate the stage. It's gonna open up the cowling. You can see the uh, thing. We're gonna go ahead and sep. Let's actually use this last little bit of fuel and give us a little bit of a little bit of kick towards the planet. So actually we want to do a um, retrograde burn. That'll bring in the um, periapsis. So we'll just go ahead and kick off the last little bit of this fuel and then we'll go underneath our own power to land. Now it's not going to be too much. I mean, we've got a full fuel tank here, but you know, it's not going to take that much get up and go to you know get up and go. So let's go ahead, and burn the last of that, separate it, and now we are on this stage. Let's turn the engine on, separate a little bit, and now we will use the landing tool. So go away vessel information, go away orbital operations, go away rendezvous. Let's do the landing autopilot. So we are going to go ahead and just click land. Now this is going to go ahead and burn until we have no orbit. So you can see it kind of tightening up. And there we go. And then it's going to just kind of hang out. And then we'll go ahead and zoom in. Speed up time. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we're good. I'm going to go ahead and quick save. And then let's just give it 2x. Let's turn RCS on so it knows you can use it. Okay. We're still landing. So yeah, here is the, let's drop the gear, cool. Here's the final descent. So we're not using a ton of fuel, but it's a decent amount. I just want to, I just hope that we are going to be able to get back to home with the Kerbin. Now, I don't exactly know the method to it, so what I'm going to do is, um, once I successfully land, which I should, um, let's actually use our RCS to get some of the help. Um, I'll go ahead and see if I can simply just launch when the moon has its face towards the Kerbin and just burn all the way to Kerbin. That's going to be interesting. Very, very thrilling. I have attempted one other landing during testing and it pretty much was me realizing I didn't have enough fuel and just smashing it in the moon, so we'll see. Burning RCS, but it's not like the RCS was critical to the mission or just this. Is basically just there. Here is the first moon landing. Ta-da! Success! We have landed on Kerbin.
maybe we can get to here. Grade. We need this to slingshot around the moon. Okay. Do we have enough fuel to burn that much? Maybe we do. We want our periaps just to be 60 because that'll be within the atmosphere. Between the atmosphere, we'll be able to slow down enough to make it. I think we made it. I think we made it, folks. Kind of in a weird backwards way, but it's warp to periapsis in 60 seconds. That's beautiful, isn't it? Kind of a roundabout way, but whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and quick save. that in the atmosphere again. Okay, we're going pretty fast. So we, let's go to retrograde. What does this thing do for us? separate from this big guy. Cool. And then let's see what happens this time. Sorry these landings and orbitals and crap are so sloppy, but hey, I'm not perfect and when it comes to me controlling everything, you know, this is what's gonna, this is what's gonna happen. Now we are going really fast, like 3,000... We're gonna Mach 10 towards the Earth, the Kerbin. So let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, this isn't good. I think pretty much the second I deploy these parachutes, they're gonna go off. Oh no! That's some crazy G forces, though. I would not want to do that. I would be an unhappy Kirby. And here we go. We think we managed to do it. It's not make our parachutes break off this time. But, uh, yeah. I think we managed to land on Kerbin, or not Kerbin, the moon. We managed to, we orbited it, landed it with an unmanned probe, and it finally has successfully returned to Kerbin. So, great. Awesome. Now, um, off screen, I will be doing the, um, the orbiting of the moon with that satellite. And I'll probably run a clip of it doing stuff, so that might be pretty cool. But until then, you guys have a great morning, evening, afternoon, whenever you watch this, your lunch break or whatever you do. If you watch it at all, I don't know. I don't even think I have that viewers, but hey, whatever. So, this has been Expendable 1, 2, 3, and this is the automated moon landing. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Hey, it landed. Ha! There we go. Let's tump him over. Ta-da! I don't want to tump over. But anyways, there you guys go.